Okay, today we're going to take a look at some plank progressions. And this is such a useful exercise, especially if you're coming back from some sort of back injury or you just want to increase your overall trunk and core strength. Usually a plank is going to be a fantastic way to start. The thing about a plank is that the contraction is non-moving for the most part. So you're gonna be holding this position the whole time. So eventually, you wanna get beyond just doing planks. So I wanna give you some progressions from a regular plank. If you only stay in planks forever, you're not gonna be getting stronger at different angles that you might need throughout your trunk. So planks are fantastic. They're gonna be foundational and really important but you want to make sure they're really good, they've been progressed really well in order to be able to get to some movements that have more range of motion with strength as well. So your first basic plank is going to be usually a front plank and oftentimes you may be starting from your knees. And the reason you're going to start from your knees is because you want to prioritize the form. Form is number one for this every single time. So if I go to my knees, this does not constitute a front plank. You want to make sure you've got a line that's straight from your knee to your next axis point, which is going to be your shoulder. And the easier way to start is going to be from your hands. This is actually a shorter, shorter levered position so that you can not have as much demand on the core right off the hop. If you want to make it a little harder, you're going to go down to your elbows just because that makes your lever away from the axis just a little longer. So in this position, when you practice your plank, you want to make sure your stomach is on and your glutes are on, not just stomach. And the thing you want to make sure you're not doing is swaying your back. People can hold a plank with a swayed back for minutes and minutes, but when you're doing a really, really good plank, and you've got the glutes on, the stomach on, you're holding just a little bit of a tucked position so that pelvis is underneath you just a little bit, that is going to be a way more challenging movement and going to get you the results that you want. So this would be the easiest start, which, which would be from your hands. This would be the next hardest. And then the next step would be from your toes and your hands. Again, glutes on, pelvic tucked, no sway back, holding this position, and this would be progressed to a plank from your elbows. So now, when you've held that plank and you know you can hold it with really good form for an extended amount of time, only then are you going to add some progressions. Maybe it's a side plank, maybe it's adding arm and leg, there's lots of things we can do with a plank. However, you're not going to add any of those progressions until you can hold the plank static in one of the basic front plank positions for at least a minute. If you can hold that really well for at least a minute, then by all means add some fantastic progressions. Some of these progressions might look like holding this position and adding an arm movement, a leg movement, but still keeping that position. You might do an up and down plank, you might do a shoulder touch plank, you might do a tall shoulder touch plank, you could do plank jumps. Any of those movements, which are all kinds of amazing op options, any of those movements have to be with still the good form because it's really easy to go tippy and all over the place and lose the pelvis position and lose the glute contraction and really not be getting any stronger but actually be detraining from that original foundational position that you developed. So we want to make sure those are there. Now let's take a quick look at a side plank. Again, if we go from the knees to the hand, that would be your starting point. If you can do this, You've got enough wrist mobility, your shoulder is stable enough, you can hold this strong. This is an amazing co-contraction that's a great uh, contribution for core strength to protect your lower back. So the side plank is always going to be in there 
as an option to keep your lower back protected and that foundation to support your trunk. So this one would be your starting point. This one, just a little bit tougher. And then you're gonna add all kinds of variations if you want. If you go to the next version, which is here, actually the next version is here, and then down to your elbow. But if you're here, once people get to this point and they've got the glutes on, they've got the stomach on, it's a good position, oftentimes people will wanna add leg movements or arm movements. You can do things like counter movements, arm leg, you can do things like abductions, but the most common mistake I see in that is succumbing to losing this straight position. So as soon as somebody goes to lift a leg, this is usually what happens. The leg lifts from here, and then we've lost the integrity of what we're really going for, which is that combination of stomach and glute engagement. So if what happens as soon as that hip bends, hips bend back, and you lift from here, we're lifting from the hip flexor instead of keeping a straight position and getting the glute with the engagement through the stomach. So it's a subtle difference, but we want this and not this. So we want this position here, strong, strong, without going into here. So those are gonna be some key additions. And if you have that, if you've got that straight position, you can hold that that's when you can add all kinds of things. You can go from a three position plank, you can go backwards, you can go side, you can add arm leg movement, counter movements. There's all sorts of amazing things you can do. But just make sure you've got that foundation first before you add all those extra movements. Then you get into adding leverage with something like this. Again, your plank rules are always the priority. If you've got the plank really good, then this won't be a problem to add in because it's simply a progression in from what you've already been doing. Same thing with something like the ball here. If this would be an extra progression because you're adding instability. If you can hold either the tall position with glutes, stomach, holding your position, or elbows and holding your position, this becomes a progression simply because this has instability to it. So that's gonna be an extra progression. However, if that is good and you're feeling like you wanna progress it further, then you add more leverage. And that one ends up being really tough. The, whether it's the ball, whether it's the floor, if you add extra movements in, those movements aren't going to come in until you've got the foundation of the original movements first. So, those are a few plank progressions. There are so many different options with planks. The real main point is that you make sure that you've got that original foundation going really, really well for you. If that's the case, then you're gonna be able to add all these extras, extra leverage, extra body part movement, extra instability, whatever you wanna add, as long as you've got that original foundation. That, all those extras, are gonna add more strength, more diversity to your training, and then from there, you'll be able to go on to other exercises that require more movement or more mobility. And the way you'd be doing that is by really tapping into all of those progressions. So give those a try. Know that those will work for your foundation, especially to support your core and your lower back. And remember that you're not going to go into any of those progressions if you don't have the original form or if you're getting any pain. So if you have pain in the back, pain in the hips, pain in the stomach, any pain spots, then you know you're gonna take a step backwards. So take those as some foundational rules and dive into really activating this trunk, activating your core, and overall protecting your back and adding to your function.